Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? Uh, episode seven. We are live and direct. I'm your host, Michael Jax, as always. We got Gary Cowan, my brother, as always. Fresh cut down for whatever. <laughs> and then today we got our brother, Ace Jesus Caratini. Some of you may know him, some of you may not, but that's that's my brother. We've known each other forever. And, uh, you know, he figured he wanted to come hang with us today on the Jex podcast. And you might actually see him, see him a couple more times, too. You never know. But what's going on, everybody? Hope all is well. Hope it's the holiday season. So, uh, you know, how y'all feeling? How, how's everybody, you know, feeling? feeling good, man. You feeling know, good? I'm not feeling? just... Just, Today's your um, birth, your son's birthday, man. Yeah. Happy birthday to Jace. Word. Shout out to Jace. Shout out to him. We just uh How old is he now? 21? Shit. Jace might as well be 21, Facts. man. He's a smart he kid. Questions like he's 21. Turn seven. We um took him to the ninja lounge, let him do his athletic thing, took him out to eat. He made sure at Cheesecake Factory told him, like, yo, today's my birthday. Somebody gotta sing. Yo, somebody time to sing. Sing. Send yeah. Send yeah. Bring it. the bring my Sunday Send and the bill. <laughs> Um, and that's that's a that's holiday season. I just got to prepare to to double up on all gifts because of those birthdays. Right, my son's birthday is December too, so we get Christmas and you know his birthday is on the 29th. I'm gonna so. find a way to merge that shit uh, as he get older. I plan mine accordingly, baby. Make <laughs> sure my kid's birthday's on the other side of the year. You heard? <laughs> I should have thought about that. I didn't, but it worked out. <laughs> <I was thinking. laughs> There's a lot going on. You know, obviously it's a holiday season. Um, you know, what what what's shaking right now? What's what's going on in the news, man? We got uh the holidays, obviously. We got man, we got a new a stimulus check, right? Everyone's got their little stimulus popping right hey, now. But quick six hundred about to drop in there. Ain't nobody dropping people. gonna be stimulated by that. <laughs> See that right now. You know what that have to feel like? You ever remember when you was at work? And you work mad overtime, then you got your check and it was short. Right. And you had that, like, I want to quit. That stimulus, hearing that 600, a lot of people probably like, Nah, you can't yeah, it's crazy, man. 600, like six hundred. What is six hundred really supposed to do for somebody? Even, that's not even a round trip Uber to Jersey after the club. That's <laughs> not the vibe. Like you, it's over for you. Six hundred. What are you? What are you doing with six hundred dollars? And then when you look up like what other countries have been doing for their people during the during the pandemic, like I've seen uh, other countries giving um, like two thousand, four thousand dollar a month checks to their residents, you know, uh, in Europe, Australia, you know, and then I saw a meme like, you know, uh, shit was funny as hell. Somebody put up a meme where it was like, you know, the rest of the world, uh, here's what they give, you know, their their, their citizens. And there was a, a picture of a steak and lobster. And it said Americans. It was a fucking pack of ramen noodles. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. You, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it's crazy though. It's been like that for a while. I mean, like, like you were saying, in Italy, they, was, they suspended mortgage payments for a while. You know, I feel bad for a lot of people. You know, the fact that they're going to, it's a $900 billion <laughs> stimulus check. Mm-hmm. Almost a trillion dollars. And we were talking earlier, where's a lot of that money going? Bro, I wrote it down. I'm glad yeah, you let's, asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to hear that. Heard, so listen to me. You get close um, to the mic real quick. I got you. There you go. So I wrote it down. So y'all seen a video with Trump yesterday on... um. On Instagram, mm-hmm. right? And he pretty much sounded off on pretty much what it is. And again, I'm not I'm not over here endorsing nobody. So don't say what I'm saying and wrong with it. I'm just asking if y'all heard. I didn't even vote a day in my life, y'all. You hear me? I, I got two felonies. I'm not with it. I can't do it. Sorry. But listen. So what he from what he was saying, so it's 900 billion, right? Mm-hmm. The bill that they passed was 5,500 pages. So suppo- who the fuck is reading all that? That's why like, this is the thing, though. Supposedly, they don't even have, they didn't even have time to read it, and they wanted to <laughs> force it down people's throats. Go ahead, sign this real quick. So they trying to like you know like like Sony used to do their artists back in the day. You know what I mean? Cut records, cut records. You know what I mean? Here, hit that real quick. Don't worry, we're gonna take care of your mother and everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing what he was wilding about is that a lot of money, billions of dollars, is going to other countries and the shit that we like. What the fuck? So yeah. it's like eight point five billion going to Cambodia. I don't even know no fucking body. Wait, 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 wait. So money's going to Cambodia. But, but, son, that's but what for that, what? I, that's why I don't know. 
That's what he was saying. All right, so put mind you, like we're just reading some of the stuff off the net. We're not saying this is going to happen. Anything like that. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Cambodia. Yeah, right. No, right. What what we read it. We right. We we seen trying to figure this out. So 134 million going to Burma. I don't even know where Burma's at. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know Burma, Alabama. (laughs) Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's going there. Uh, 1.3 million to Egypt. Again, for what? 25 million to, to gender. To the, de- the gender program in Pakistan. So that shit's crazy. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, don't even ask me, son. I'm just reading it off. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The gender program that they wait, have wait, in, wait, in wait, Pakistan. Wait, I'm wait, not, wait. You think I'm lying to you, Mike? I, I don't, I'm not saying. I'm not even saying so you lying. I just want to see some of this myself. Like, Listen, bro. What? I don't know, man. Some I don't know if Caitlyn Jenner got in there and and, 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 <laughs> and in a position, but it's just crazy. It's like the gender program in Pakistan. Pakistan. Another five hundred and five million to Belize, to Costa Rica. It's gonna spread between the countries: Honduras, El Salvador, what? Nicaragua, Panama. Send me this link. I'm man. telling you, bro. Know. He said it. You could just go and, and, and hear what he says. Um. Forty million to the the Kennedy Center that's already that's closed that people can't even go to. What you said in that money there for? Another billion to the Smithsonian Museum because they want to create a women's museum. Which okay. is okay. That's great. That's that's, that's, that's yeah, popping. Right. That's awesome. That's pop, that's but is that now. needed right now? Yeah. It's not needed. Mm-hmm. You can't even go over there right now. What's the point? Right? Twenty five million. To count Amber Jack Fish in Mexico. I swear to my mother, son. That's what he said. The wait, only, wait, could you do me a favor? Son, I don't even know what an Amber Jack Fish look like, but what the fuck that mean, yo, 25 that's, million to count Amber Jack Fish? That's got to go, that's got to be going to certain people's like direct But that money is all Straight in the up. stimulus. So that money yeah. out of that 900 billion, that's where all this money is getting allocated to these places. Right. What the, who the, I, you ever heard of an Amber Jack Fish? And you eat fish, dog. <laughs> yeah, I never heard of that. So again, I think the American nah, that's people, bull- that's, 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 when, that's, they re- when they really do their homework and read where a lot of this money going to, they will feel offended. Like, damn, right? Amber Jack yeah, fish. And Jamaica wasn't even on that you list of countries, man. So at the end of the day, you know, like, Belize got a little something. I'm trying to figure out why. Why yeah. would Belize get something? Well, I'm not mind you. I get yeah, we we grateful, but again, uh, I don't know why. I, I don't. I don't, I don't understand where some of a lot of this money's going. But it's crazy because if you do look up where some of this money is going, you have to scratch your head like, it's, well. Why? 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 Why is that? Five hundred and sixty-six million for construction on the FBI buildings. The FBI building over there by your crib is yeah, fire. Is okay, I'm not gonna lie, it's fire. But, but I bet you, I bet you, I bet you, it costs a five hundred sixty-six million to build that. Yeah, it, look, it looks like it, I yo, don't even know how many FBI look, buildings. I ain't gonna front. The one by your house, oh, they took a couple, a couple million to do that. That yeah, looked nice. That's just how They gotta look fire. I, who but cares? imagine what about it in Wichita? What an FBI building look like? So it probably like a post office in New York City. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't probably look that crazy. And then you know he goes on there. He's he's wilding. But then when I from the research that I that I was doing, you know he wants to give people two thousand dollars, which is you know in my opinion I still don't think I, you know enough. what? Here, hold on. Again, this is stuff that I just been reading and listening to. I read today. This is not me. This is from sources that I've been looking at on uh, the internet. That that was all like a cover up. A flim flam. Like, a flim flam. Like he did that to like divert people's attention from him uh, pardoning what uh, several, you know, what was it, a black Blackwater uh, operatives? Yeah, yeah. That like I murdered, that. you know, a mm-hmm. bunch of people over in Iraq. I think it was. It mm-hmm. might have been Iraq. It might have been somewhere else. Yeah. I'm not sure. But some Blackwater operatives were, you know, they they were serving life terms for committing war crimes. You know what I mean? And he ended up pardoning them, which is. Crazy to think about, right? He could have yeah. pardoned some other people that when didn't commit c- it, cra- crazy crimes like that. Why, you think that? But but uh, but he pardoned them. But he so he pardoned them at the same time. He was like, "Hey, but wait a minute, listen. Now I think people need to get two thousand dollars instead yeah. of six hundred. Hey, let them motherfuckers go. Let them go. Hey, let them niggas go. See, yeah, two thousand. We want we want we want you to I get agree. you know two thousand dollars instead. Those people that killed those people overseas war crimes. I mean, I don't know if it was under his assessment. I don't even care. <laughs> doesn't even matter. I don't even know either, man. But my thing know. is this. All of that, somebody or probably somebody asked for something, but from what I was reading, the Democrats have agreed to get to two thousand. They don't have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. It's a separate bill that's included or something like that. But he's just play, he's just being supposedly, from what I read, he's just being you know who he is, right? And he wants to you know take take the shine. Take he wants shine, to take the yeah. credit for the, for giving the people what it is. 
at the end of the day, you know, I'm not, I don't know too much about politics, so I don't want to dive too deep into it. You're right, right. The $600, the, the, the audacity that they would even mention that to people, the crisis that people is in, there's, there's women out here that can't get their kids Christmas gifts. You know, fathers that can't get their kids Christmas gifts. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, a shame and a burden that you got to carry. You know, right. I mean, we've all been in situations where we was fucked up. You know, for me, Christmas and the holidays are always kind of iffy with me because it just brings back a lot of memories of, of for me from back in the day. Like right, how right. rough holidays sure was, were. And yeah. was some, right. you know, when I wasn't on, able to get my kids certain things, like it's just, it's you know, it still sits at a place with me. So when I see $600, it's like, you know. It's crazy. Especially today, we can't do shit bro, with six hundred dollars. Right. I'm getting you nothing, bro. PlayStation I, Five is 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 over. For no you. game. It. You're not no getting nothing. Listen, you, listen. If it, uh, you my, mind you, console, if, no if you looking forward, if you're somebody, because I'm gonna be real with you, man. I I haven't even seen a check from the government in a long time. But if you're somebody who's looking forward for that six hundred dollar check. Oh, the thought of a PlayStation should not even be in the forefront of your mind. No, but yeah, now. yeah, that thing's going like on. The, the six hundred dollars, fifty dollars on a toy, right? The six hundred dollars is not going to go anywhere for anybody, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nice it's, pair of Grinch. You, got, you can't, get the you can't even get the Grinch. Yeah, you ain't tomorrow. even gonna get to be able everybody to get the Kobe's tomorrow. It's over. It's a wrap. Yeah, you know what's crazy? My homeboy that I was following, he was posting clips of when Jordans first dropped the ones. Yeah, and it was like thirty nine ninety five. For the black and white red ones. He's showing was the that? news, the news clips. That was that, um, that, 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 the paper, newspaper. Right? When they was dropping, yeah. Mm-hmm. So back then, thirty nine, yeah, forty dollars for some shit, from Jay. I got a picture of my shit crib. is two hundred now on the release. Mm-hmm. I got a picture of my crew, me and my brother standing in front of an old ass box TV. And it says surf Pregnant and turf, back joints. steak and, and, and lobster. Sizzler. Whatever. I don't even I couldn't tell, but you can see surf and turf. A dollar eighty. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Oh, that is, oh, don't even try to play me. I'm not that old, son. But still, you know, eighty something. A dollar eighty for yeah, surf and turf, bro. <laughs> My nigga, you can't even get a cheeseburger from White Castle. A dollar eighty, son. And I know this for a fact because I've been there all the time. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, Yo, that's crazy, people, bro. Man. No, no, it is. The number it is. two cheeseburgers but, was three twenty four at McDonald's. Come on, bro. But, but, I remember but, that number vividly. <laughs> Think about that, though, man. Like, how many people right now are suffering because of what's going on? You know, they're looking forward for that $600. And most of the, you know, again, a lot of things that we do talk about on this podcast is uh, just helping people find a find a way to think, right? To help them get to a better situation. You know, that's always the goal with this podcast. So some of the stuff we're talking about is kind of just bring awareness of, one, as everything that's going on in the world. Uh, but, but two, for you to have awareness. So, like, you know, you know, you know, Jesus mentioned where some of this money is going from the stimulus. Obviously, it ain't going to us, right? That's, All of it. I think <clears> it's not going math, to us. Less, but, it's like 10% or less is coming to the American people. Most of that. It's crazy. Most of that, 800, almost 800 billion of it is not coming to us. Almost 800 billion of it is going to, to, towards other resources. And they're going to have loans and stuff that people could apply mm-hmm. for. So, you know, the scam is going to go crazy. Yeah, dude, January. listen, like, like earlier this year, we, we were seeing all the, you know, before I even get into what I'm about to say, because I'm about to get, I was about to say something <laughs> wild, crazy right now. But you know, we kind of probably talked about it before. But the point what I'm trying to say is like, you know, you, you've got to put yourself in position to, you know, do something different, right? Because we can't, you cannot rely on the government. You touched on something, you know, before too. It's like, you know, how many people? Because you you said holidays always kind of brings this feel like this. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, a nostalgic feel, mm-hmm. but but not necessarily the best. The best feeling. emotions, yeah, exactly. Because it makes you think about the past. Think about the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how you feel that way, Gary, but I know it does for me too. In a lot of ways, where there were times where I couldn't, you know, purchase gifts for people and things of that nature. But um, but what everything that's going on right now is very just. It's, it's important, man, to just keep your your eyes open, keep your mind open, you know, to uh, just 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 different opportunities that's available to you in the, in in the world, but. Um, yeah, man, it's just crazy. It's just crazy yeah, man, right now. You know like, what I'm saying? I'm touch just... When you said people like, I think now's the time for people to really open their eyes and see that nobody's going to come save them. You Amen. Know, the government's not going to do it. You know, your neighbor's not going to do it. You know, your your homeboy that's in a better situation and you's not going to do it. And if you don't, if you don't really make a conscious decision to figure something out that it doesn't have to be right now, we, we're already in the slums. You know, we could, you could thug it out some more, but set yourself up. To never be in a situation like this ever again, because you know this is, something like this is very possible to happen again. It's going to yeah, happen. it's going to happen again. And then again, with the way the government is 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 handling the situation, you know, 
there's a lot of people that's also thriving in in, 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 in a moment like this. Right. So what's the difference between those people and us? You know, right. some of the time, you know, sometimes it's, it doesn't have to do with it, with your upbringing. It doesn't have to do with your job. It doesn't have to do with anything. It just it depends on the decisions and choices you made earlier in, in, your life. in your life. And I think people need to start paying more attention to that because I think people live day by day and don't understand that things like this are possible. You know, well, people, as, mm-hmm. as you say that we talk about the choice, like we all we all there's always two sides of the coins. And in every crisis, there's somebody benefiting from a crisis. You can look at it as simple as, as simple as, you know. When somebody passes in your family, or somebody's gonna get paid off that burial. You understand? Mm-hmm. So somebody's always on the opposite side of Absolutely. benefiting. Um, but for me, when it comes to the holidays and as we talk about how much things cost, all it brings back to me just it, it just reminds me of inflation. It might it reminds me of how much the dollar is not worth anything anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because we come from a world where everybody's saying stack your money, stack, save, stack. So. All I was doing was hard work, stacking, stacking. But I'm like, yo, you you can't even buy much now. And if you're not a person putting your resources and things, learning how to do certain things financially, that stacking ain't going to mean shit in a few years because the reality is prices of shit is going up. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of I dumb go. people with, with money saved that don't know what to do with it. You yeah, know and they think they're right. doing the right thing. They you think they're doing the right thing. They're doing part, part of it. You know, They're not spending it on stupid shit, but now holding it ain't going to benefit you either. either. How, how do you think right now with like... Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm always getting on social media and shit, but how do you think the you know state of social media is playing on people's minds right now? So, for example, the reason why I'm saying that is because when you get on your gram, you don't see what we're necessarily talking about. You see the highlight reels, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody outside. Look, I just seen, yo, this is cr-. like, no joke. I, I thought this was kind of sick. So, uh, Saweetie, right? Saweetie, yo, she just bought, bought a, a plane, jet. Yeah, a jet. Bought. Wow. Like, mm-hmm. impressive. You know, I don't really know. I'm not going to hate on that. Like, that's, if that's true. That's fire, right? Right. But people see, like, the highlights, right? You know what I'm saying? And how do you think that that plays on people's minds mm-hmm. right now when the reality probably more so is there's a lot more people not doing well because of what's going on in the world. But when they open their cell phones because, you know, the, the most common thing to do right now for almost any human being is to, throughout their day, go on their, go on their Instagram or whatever the case may be. Um, how do you think that that's playing in people's minds right now? How do you think that's affecting people? I mean, I think... I think Instagram and, and a lot of social media, it's a, a catch-22 because there are people that have content that's trying to uplift, but a lot of people are just doing that. Mm-hmm. But I think for people, per se, I think most of the people that are on the on Instagram that are going through tough times don't even correlate those people's lives with theirs. I don't even think for one second that people look at that and be like, you know, I can get there. They, I think they say, I, want, I wish I could have that. Mm-hmm. I don't think they But ask, they look at it more so for entertainment I think purposes? Of asking, I think it's more like a like a vice, like a drug. It's just here to entertain you. To get I mean, you that's what bullshit. it is, though. I mean, yeah. but, truth, truth be told, that's, that's, that's what social media is. Absolutely. This shit is a drug. Of course. Right. But if you, now you're looking at, at, at all these people, you're, you, you get to choose who you follow. So there right. probably are people on there that are sharing similar stories or sharing... You know, hardships and stuff like that. But, you know, who really wants to hear that? Right. You know, right. a lot of people could be For going sure. through that type of shit in their life and don't even tell nobody because they're too afraid of what other people are going to think. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So why talk about your problems or even think about your problems? Just get on Instagram and keep scrolling and, you know, For sure. you know I like, yeah, time I like what you said in that because at the same time, when you choose who you follow, my Instagram will, will probably have a lot of entrepreneurship business based on who my, my circle yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some For people sure. ain't seen half the shit we seen. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Some people just seen a lot of stupid highlights. But if I'm not in my situation, I'm seeing somebody buy a jet. If I'm not really, if I don't even know the price of a jet, I'm not going, I'm not going to see that as being a big powerful thing. I'm just going, oh, that's some rich shit that rich people do. Right. Mm-hmm. But when we see it, it kind of hits a quarter. We're like, oh shit, like oh, shit. that's a yeah, big boss exactly. move. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. At the same time, this is the end of the year. Mm-hmm. There's a crisis going on and there's new laws about to be passed. A lot of the financial rich people are trying to find these these things to put their money into, mm-hmm. these assets to buy, these things to write off. Mm-hmm. So I usually, at the end of the year, you'll start to see a lot of people buy their biggest, their jets. They'll right. buy big buildings. They'll buy, buy big cars. They'll buy yachts. They find mm-hmm. they got to buy a boat because yeah. 
business, they they have to do those things or they got to give that money back. And they said, well, I'm going to give it back or I'm going to go buy me a boat. And we'll buy me a fucking boat. Yeah, right. Exactly. So uh, we know that now mm-hmm. because we're in that world. But a lot of people don't even know that. So they just feel like, damn, these people That's getting all saying. this shit for Christmas. Right, 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 right. I honestly right, right, right. feel like they look at that and they probably, they don't, they probably don't even understand the magnitude of what just happened. They look some. Sometimes people look at me like, "Oh, that, they capping. That's not real. You know, that's it's not real, right? Not real. I mean, that's what I, a lot of people were saying about like her situation. Like, oh, that can't be real. It can't be. And I never say that because you yeah. just never know. Right? Yeah, you know that it's exactly. That's, that shit is re- so very possible. Someone that's mine that's never seen anybody or even know, we've known person people that personally own their own plane. So you know, right. those kind of things are possible. Are real, yeah, yeah. So for you, you look at it like, damn, that's, she's getting it like. And remember, that. her her mom that's has been in the entertainment like, industry for a long time too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you never really know what's going. So the reason why I that because some people they, they'll take that as like damn why not me but then some other people yeah, look at it as like depressed. well damn like yo that's inspiring I want to do that too you know what I'm saying yeah. so that's the re- the reason why I asked that question like how do you think that stuff like that or other because it's not just I just use that because that just happened like a day or two ago but there's other yeah. people that are going through things I mean I, I did see that and I was like damn I didn't even know she was up like that because mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm not in tune with, with i probably seen and heard her name two or three times I'm not even I don't it's know Quavo song. girl man do you, do it's you, Quavo you, lady not, do you think do you think that someone that's going through the normal uh, issues that 98% of the people in this country are going through will honestly look at that and say, why not me? I, I don't know. I think so. I'm going to tell you, you why. Know, here's, here's why Why I think, I think not why everybody. Not, why not, not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody. No, no, no. I think so. Here's, here's the people that I do think that would probably look at that and be like, yo, what the fuck? Damn, why not me? People in her age group. You gotta understand. I, I think she's in her early to what mid twenties. She she's a musician. You know right. what I'm saying? She's she's she a musician. has like really. I, I don't I don't know who she is. Uh, she's she's got like girl. what a hit record or two or whatever. But she's you know Quavo's girl. Mm-hmm. I actually don't to be, be quite honest. I don't really follow her music that much. But she's popping on social media. Like people love yeah, her. You I know what I'm saying? Her name yeah, her name is always around. She's Quavo's girl. Quavo from the Migos. That's right. his girl. Um, but I think that there might be some people that you know who's in her age group. That's like, yo, damn. Like she's my age. Why ain't I doing that? Like, why can't I do that? Not everybody, but there might be some people out there that's like, yo, or there might be some other people in general that are just looking at that and saying like, yo, damn, I wish I can, you know, be doing stuff like that in my life. Like, why can't I do that? Not everybody, but I do think there are some people, you know what I'm saying? I was going to add to that, what I want to see what you would think about it is you see how you're saying some people like, why not? Why can't I do that? Yeah. Now, if you living at home with your mom and you don't got nothing going together, not, with nothing, go, uh, by the way, nothing's wrong with living with your mom, just saying. For sure. I feel like for you to even ask that question or feel that kind of way, you should have certain things in your life set up and things going in, in that ser- sort of direction. I feel like you, you don't have the right to even act, feel that way if you're not getting up and grinding, if you're not getting up and yeah, trying to yeah, figure yeah. your ways out. So if you you know if you're a person that's working a job that you hate that you know you can do better at you sh- you don't have the right to ask but yourself that question. But there's just depends well, on well, the it, idols too because think about it when we was in the hood and you you obviously you said you listen to Jay you listen to other rappers and when they started to come up and do certain things you would also be thinking damn like you know he look he's coming from where I'm coming from yeah that could be me too yeah the so Jay Z might the have that we grew group. up to. The music they were putting out for us was kind of a blueprint of how they got to that point. So that's but why that's a lot saying, of us we don't listen right. to her. But I'm pretty yeah. sure there's some young ladies out there that follow her. Yeah, yeah. They dress like her. They spend all their money. When she do that, I'm like, damn, I gotta get to that point to mm-hmm. do that too. So I guess there's gonna be she's gonna have her people that uh, look at her as a role model and say the same thing. Like, yeah, damn, yeah. that gotta be me. I, I need she, to work. Yeah, so that. It probably is. She and I think the problem now was, is that was we end up seeing some of that, those highlight reels, and we go broke trying to. Living highlights for sure. Trying to keep that, image, but that's a, that's follow that. But that's that's a that is a uh, a curse of our culture, mm-hmm. right? The curse of our culture is that we want to do we we want to follow what we see a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was actually you know for I, I you know it was a catch twenty two for me like seeing things like for example what is uh, so we and I'm and I apologize if I'm saying her nigga I don't even know if I'm saying it properly so we so weedy so why do so weedy it might be right lady. Quit, no disrespect. I know, no disrespect right now, but but you know, I was one of those people that it motivate me because there's people out there. Because you asked a really good question, you were like, you know, if you're not necessarily doing things that's putting you in that in that trajectory to like even go on that route, like why would you feel away? There's certain people that they wish they knew how to go in that trajectory, but they have no clue because they might be at home, like no, no, like real talk, Just they might be them. at home. Their mom wasn't in the industry. Yeah. They might be at home. They're not a musician. Absolutely. They might be at home 5'8". They can't hoop. 
Yeah. They might be at home. They can't run a 40 in two seconds. So they're dreaming. So they dre- they're trying to figure out, well, oh, damn, man. all of my peers are living like this. Why not me? But why can't I do it? I feel like I deserve it. And I'll be real. I'm saying this because I felt like that was me. Like, no joke. I really, I really, I was looking at, yo, I honestly, like one of my idols growing up, I had a few, but one of my idols, top two of my list, tied one and one A, what was Puff Daddy. Mm-hmm. I got two earrings in my ears because of Puff. No joke. No, that that's a true story. Facts. And I would see how Puff is moving. Now, mind you, Puff is 20 years older than me. But I would look at him and and as at in, in astonishment, like he's from New York. He is lit, like he would be in the biggie videos with on the boat with the big cell Fly. phone. Fly. So, I love gloves with Puff. Our outfits. What's up, man? <laughs> right, exactly. He was, he, was, was, he, was, he was he would like I Puff was buffing, was buffing baseball gloves from Models. Yo, back for in right? The no, and the, the, the Nike, you had the Nike yeah. ones with him and Mace uh, had, right? Absolutely. So but even now, mind you, and to this day, I was giving props to this day he's still doing it. He just gave his mom a million dollars in a Bentley mm-hmm. for her 80th birthday. Puff. Salute to you. Shout out to Puff. Right? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, salute to you. You, 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 whatever. I don't care what nobody say about you, Puff. You can't do no wrong in my eyes at all whatsoever, man. Real talk. But but, but I'm saying I was one of those people that you just asked the question of. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't in that. I'm, bro, I was home on Fulton in my room in my mother's house at 25 years old saying, how, how how the fuck can I get out of here? Because I wanted to, right? Yeah, but you didn't say why can't why not me? Why can't I get a plane? Yeah, nah. We know I mean, Mike complain. Mike the storm. Yeah, the Mike complain, but Mike never the said why drop him off to the wrong fucking what, door. Yeah, but Mike always had a Mike had a fit. That's wild. That's he good. always had a laugh. He, he always liked nice things. What I'm trying to say is when you talk about this. People say, why not? Why yeah, not? Yeah, you know you're right. I never, asked, right. You, right. You I never, never asked that question like, of why. You always thought about how. How? Can I yeah, yeah, that? you're right. See, that's the question that people you're should right. be asking. And I feel like it's a lack of education. Because, like, to correlate the story, I'll never forget. Mike's always, we all, we all grew up in that lifestyle. We all look, looked at the hip hop culture and we wanted that so bad. And we only thought the only way to ever get there is through hip hop. Right? right, or through being a ball player, and I'll never forget when Mike, when you first came to me and showed me the business opportunity that we were part of, and you said to me, "Yo, I found a way to to get the lifestyle we always wanted without going through the bullshit of the music industry." Remember? Mm-hmm. So we sometimes we see the music industry so big and so vast that we don't really realize we don't idolize the music industry. We idolize the lifestyle of the music industry. Right. And once you understand that there's different ways to obtain that lifestyle without the music industry, I feel like your perception can shift now. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like a lot of people are so following these people that you're saying because they don't know of any other way to get there. It's a right. lack of education. People don't know the investors. They don't know people like Q that you had on the show. They don't know right, that right. there's ways to make that happen without being a musician or an artist. Right, right. Or to have to sell drugs or be a pimp or do some crazy wild shit <laughs> or something. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. He said pimp. Be, be, no, <laughs> I'm talking, you know, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> I ain't never been shit about my dad self. Let me stop posting. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that I feel like if people, instead of posting on Instagram their trophies, their yeah. trophies, and started started giving people information, giving them something that they could a blooper they can follow, and and now you post this picture and th- now tell us how you got here. Right. Let us right, know how right. you got we, here. We spoke about a that a little there. bit, right? right? Just think about right, it. Right, no, right, one, no, facts. We all want our life to look like a, a friggin' music video. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But number two, even when we became the ones with opportunity, a lot of time when you go to these people that you're around, they're kind of asking, well, what's in it for me? Because we are, we again, we spoke about last time, we're around people who they're so used to being stingy and keeping a lot of good shit for themselves. The moment you sharing good shit, they're kind of like, they get very skeptical. Mm-hmm. You know what's so crazy? So I, even I, free game, I don't even get wanna, skeptical. I, I want you to continue your thoughts, so don't forget what you're about to say, but you just reminded me about something that, you know, Dion mentioned, you know, to me, I think it was a day or two ago, because our culture, where we come from, is like, <laughs> you know, he said, <laughs> I told you, he was like, you know, where we come from is like, like you just said, we want to harbor information. We don't want to like give out any information because we feel like somebody might take it and run with it. But that's, it's ingrained in our DNA is like, yo, we were slaves once. He was like, yo, if the sl- Facts, Dion, Dion said if we was a, if we was you know a slave and a slave master gave us a steak, we had to run to the to the closet <laughs> to eat it. 
for real. It's, no, but it's, just, it's funny, but it's, it's not funny. Right? Analogy, yeah, yo. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's, it's, it's funny hilarious. because first of all, the same, the same as I give yo, you no steak. So that's exactly. really funny. as a joke. Right. But, but, but if, if you, you did, it, so I'm it's, it's like, you know, oh, we out. This is, yeah. you know, this is mine. And then if you, you know, you don't, and if you're worried that if your peers, right, kn- knows about what you have, then they might come after you for it. So we yeah, come from this culture, right? Right. Yeah. right that but they already want to come after you. Or if not, you regardless, are. regardless. And right. that's why that's a lot right. of people don't come back to, the, that's why when people get, <clears throat> make, they do well for themselves, they don't come back to the hood. Right. Because most, look at a lot of people, a lot of musicians, a lot of them, most of, you know, some of them can, but look at some of them that, you know, rest in peace that died in the hood. Look at Chinks Drugs. Look at Stack Bundles. Look at a lot of these people. Nipsey. That, Nipsey. That, that mm-hmm. died in their own neighborhood. Rest in peace, that, y'all. Rest in peace. It doesn't matter if you yep. try to give back help. It, it's, that, that's not the issue. It's not the person that's successful. It's, it's It starts from the ground floor. We were all brought up with this, with our mindset. We would, we learn from people that learn from people that learn from people that learn from people. And it goes, it goes our people go all the way back to what you was just saying. So it, something has to happen and it, for us to be able to think different, you understand what I'm right. saying? Well, that's exactly what this kind of, these platforms is for now. Right. Right. To open it up, to right. open it up. We're aware. We put our free game all the time, but they, and exactly. some people are always going to look at it and say, "Well, send it for them." Exactly. Yeah. Why are they doing yeah. it? What you know? What what? How are they going to benefit? Mm-hmm. One and, of the things. One of the things that you know you brought up a good point because yeah, this platform like platforms like this and many others you know nowadays are meant to kind of help our culture get out of that mindset. For example, something that just popped off in our you know uh, uh, re- this week you know that pertains to our culture is uh, Pharrell's interview with the breakfast with uh, not the breakfast club, excuse me with uh, with, with drink champs, champs with Nori, Nori right. So shout out to shout out to drink champs shout out to shout out to Nori and everybody yeah, over there. Shout out to Great, That's listen, I, amazing. Interview, love the interview, but he brought up a good point that that's been circulating around the internet where Pharrell said, "Yo, like I'm snitching, like yeah, bottom nice. line, I'm, I'm I'm going to snitch." You know what I'm saying? That's what he was saying because he's not built for that type of shit. And and you know if something goes down and he's got a snitch, he's going to snitch. But mind you, I'm paraphrasing. I definitely would you know to say go check out that interview because it was amazing. But th- what the reason why I bring it up is because that's something that's a part of our culture that has been ingrained, ingrained in us. Mm-hmm. No snitching, you can't snitch. But the real thing is like you know that that ideology. A big part of it is 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 so fucking stupid. It's stupid. bad. It's so dumb because you know. And I'll give my take. You know, I'm gonna give you all your take, right? So, when it comes to the idea of snitching, right? Uh, obviously, where we come from, snitching is that that is, I mean, that's a no no. That that's, is, listen, that's... that is against the that is against our law, right? You can't mm-hmm. snitch. Yeah. But then, if you think about it, right? You can't you can't be mad at somebody who is not a part of the criminal activities of a group of individuals really? that accidentally gets caught up in it and then he's got to tell the truth. Joe from up the block. Yeah, yeah he's got to tell the truth. He years for, 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 you know, for conspiracy. Exactly, he's got to yeah. tell the truth just to save his face and he had no part of it. But, uh, you know, people in our culture will, you know, deem him unworthy to be a part of our culture because he, you know, sa- saves himself yes. when he had nothing to do with it. Okay. So, Can go I, Just to touch on it before. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The, I feel me personally, I feel the people that feel that way, that deem him or the, the, the snitch, anybody that's calling, that thinks that what Pharrell said is stupid or is, he's a snitch, I can guarantee you never put in no work in the street, mm-hmm. had absolutely probably never been locked up, never been in handcuffs, never even probably sold, they probably sold for a couple dime bags of weed <laughs> and they think that they hot. Right, right. Any, any real street person right. is going to see that and respect that. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Because that's not expected from Pharrell. That's expected from little Tony, little dude and them boys mm-hmm. that's running around in the streets. You know, that's in the got streets. Got their hands dirty themselves. And probably never even got their hands dirty. They just, they chilling with Joe that, that got right. his hands dirty so they think they hot. Right. A lot of people that point the finger have mm-hmm. never been in a, in a, in a, in a, in an interrogation room with police facing mm-hmm. 40 years fact, right. for some shit that they ain't do. You right. understand? There's rules to stitching in the streets. Right. If me and, if, if us three came up and we bank robbers, we, mm-hmm. we, we've been doing this for years. We have an understanding that if Mike goes down, Gary goes, I go down. I know my kids are taken care of. Mm-hmm. That's where snitching does not apply. Right. All right, I could do forty because I know when I know my kids are still gonna go to college. I know my my, my girl's life bill's gonna get paid, and I know my family's gonna get taken care of, mm-hmm. and vice versa if it happens. But what's happening now is that the cops are not—they playing dirty. Right. They grabbing a crackhead off the street. And yo, where you got this from? Oh, right. where yo, you got it locked up 14 times. Well, oh, you know what? Oh, you're not even a you're not even a citizen. You might get the point. They throw every <laughs> yeah. they throw right, every right. yeah. that they can at you, and now you shake it in your boots. You're like, damn, I should have yeah. said no to drugs. Now you <laughs> fucked up. 
<laughs> you know? But it happens to the best of us, though. Right, but like right. I said, going back it's to what you're saying, what Pharrell did was real shit. It's real, it's real. I'm calling it as simple as this, and I know Steve Javier mentioned it. Uh, it's a street code. And just because you was outside don't mean you was a part of the streets. Mm-hmm. So that's why they always say, because of social media and sometimes because of music, people feel like because they was outside, they're part of that world. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes people are dumb enough to do certain legal shit with niggas that's not built for it. Mm-hmm. And those would be the people that you got to get nervous about now when cops pull up because they wasn't supposed to be a part of the streets anyway. Absolutely. Right, were. right. So if you, like you said, if you in the streets and you know the code, then that snitching rule applies to you. You know what you signed up for. You know that's what happens. Mm-hmm. But for the dude that was just walking by in the room that just knows you, they're going to give him the book and he's going to quiver. Of course. Mm-hmm. He's going to get nervous and, and he is going to fucking tell. Sing like he is Patty going LaBelle. Like, tell. What? Like, James like, Brown. like he's singing for Patty Paz. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I understand in that terms because like Steve, Steve Harvey had made a, a comment. And this was a while back. This wasn't even on the Pharrell thing. But he said, if I'm a thief... And somebody robs me and I tell I'm a snitch because I'm a part of that world. Right. Yeah. But if I'm not, I'm an innocent bystander, somebody and I tell. That's, that's that's right. It. So it just it's depends new. on how you look and at you it. You deserve to get the rules. If you're in that street life, the rules are they apply to you. Mm-hmm. So if you snitch and you get handled, then you know you that's you know what's going on. A lot of people that's that's facing that kind of time. In the back of their mind, subconsciously, they know they're going down. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, right. you understand. Right. What I'm saying? So if you want to be around it's people that can perfect that can be built like that, Michael Vick, be prepared. Mm-hmm. Michael Vick, right. comes. he right. You got all these street dudes around you, mm-hmm. quote unquote street dudes. But if, if if I'm if I'm if Mike if if Gary's Michael Vick, and they come for Gary, mm-hmm. and I'm a bum ass street dude that that's. He said, "Get me." You think I'm letting Mike Vick go down? Now that's what I'm taking a hit. Right. That's a that's right. a street code that that doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Right, it's, right. That's just mm-hmm. obsolete, bro. Mm-hmm. People need to get that through their minds. So like, we don't we these kids didn't grow up the way we grew up. The night the eighties guys, the night they done they gone. They all dead or they mm-hmm. drug addicts mm-hmm. or they they you know they fucked up. So at the end of the day, it's certain rules oblige, and uh, I guarantee you, ninety nine point nine percent of the people you see on Instagram posts. He just, he just never been in, never even, probably even got parking tickets, bro. I never, <laughs> you know what I'm telling you? Because it's easy. Because yeah, right. our culture is easy to hide behind right, our culture. Right. Because you just got to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. You can look like you tough and be soft as baby shit. Right. Mm-hmm. But they, well, if I don't know you and right. you got a good meme, that's the perception. You, our culture has taught us, like, oh shit, this nigga might be real. Mm-hmm. Because this is what they look like in the videos, this is what they look like in the movies, this is what they look. You just got to look the parts, huh? Mm-hmm. I learned that from school, cheating on people on my paper, man. I used to be always cheating and shit off Tara, but but I know a person be oh I would I get definitely an cheat off of Tara without question. Yeah, next to and all that. But then what happened was something got caught. Damn, yo, Gary was fought. he was cheating too. I was like, oh, oh shit. wow, yo, that's yeah, crazy. crazy. Right. Throw you right under the bus. I know, yeah. Right. I said, I know. If I'm gonna do it and I gotta, I get caught, I'm good. I don't say who I cheated yeah, from, right. who else was cheating on the paperwork. I was that guy. And that, I was my, that was my cheat. The, the way it was up the, our upbringing too, because yeah. you you come from a Jamaican background. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure if you if you came home and you, you told you and your mom and dad probably caught you telling on somebody like that, they probably slap you upside the head. Of course, right, for sure. You understand? So yeah. again. There's, there's a the small part that's that's up you know that's cool, but then there's a part where yo your life's on the line. If you exactly. know, if I got a wife and kids at home, and I and I'm working a job, I got to get my ass up at seven in the morning to ride the train, and I, just because I know but my man, listen. I got nothing to do with that. Right. You can't knock somebody that doesn't know that. Right. You understand? You yeah. Just can't. I just fo- to let y'all know, my man over here has the background to be able to comment on that. Absolutely. Without question. I've been, yeah. I've been locked Without up question. for not snitching. But right. Or somebody had every right to snitch on that. Mm-hmm. They ended up on me. So I've been <laughs> exactly, there. Yeah. Bro, on my mother, my dead mother, my kids. Mike was there. Yeah. I, Mike used to put his last $20 on my commissary. We used mm-hmm. to talk on the phone and all that. Mm-hmm. I remember the last time I spoke to Mike before I came home, you was in LA with Shane. Yep. And bro, I, was like, I was out there broke. And, and I was like, like and I had and you. I remember living through Mike. Like, yo, well, how does it look? What is it? What, you know? <laughs> Because he just, I was, he'd take me away. But I was in there for some bullshit mm-hmm. because I knew some shit that was going on. Yes, I was part of it. But because I chose to stick to my guns mm-hmm. and and and, to, and and face my actions like a man, mm. this bum-ass motherfucker ends up stitching. And the best part about it, we didn't even have nothing to do with each other. They wanted to give me more time than him. Right. That's I signed a plea deal to do 24 months. 
He got 18 months in, <laughs> and I'm not even the guy that they wanted. Right. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But again, they the judicial because, system, because, and that's another story for another my day. My stupid ass was living off of rules that don't of, that were not meant to to make me better. Mm-hmm. That that whoever implemented that in people, you you know, you implemented that people that that go by that way usually. Like I said, it's only a, a very small percentage of, of street people that that should that's apply to. That, right, you understand right. what I'm saying? I'm in there about to do two and a half years for some shit I ain't got no part of because I don't want to be. I don't want to. I no, can't right. live with myself right. because I right. got it so deeply ingrained in my mind. And when I look back, and I'm like, I missed two years of. I missed. Not to, I thank God I ended up beating the case and getting whatever time. But I missed several months in a maximum security. From I didn't get to see my my kids. I didn't get to see my friends. I didn't get to. I missed everything. Mm-hmm. I lost everything I worked for. With, with, you know, when we was working, doing what we was doing, for nothing. Mm-hmm. All right. For nothing. My, and Mike, Mike got us. So Mike, Mike knows people. We all, me and Mike, we grew up together. away from each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Mike knows what time it is. So, you know. And what, what, what's funny is that I fall under like the, the Pharrell category. Absolutely. Because I, I, I had, I never really. I didn't really do much, you know what I'm saying, growing up. I knew a lot of wild characters growing up, but I, I wasn't really a part of it. The most I ever did was sell like a couple of nickel bags of weed in school. like, And that, that was like a handful of times, right? I was not the criminal guy. Like, that wasn't me, you know what I'm saying? Um, yo, but there was one time, like, that was I was in a crazy situation, yo, crazy situation. where And it was one of my, one of my, my best friends. I still, I still, still, still know him to this day, man. Like, but we, was, we were best friends as kids. And um, he was a wild boy. My man was he was a wild, but it was it was it was it was funny because uh, I I did not live the life he lived, but but we were super close. You know what I'm saying? It was a weird dynamic because he was out doing a lot of wild shit. But he was a long ranger. Though. Yeah, he was. He, he was, was. Ra- much love, yo, and and my and, nigga. Oh man, my man. nigga, I love you, bro. What but, a uh, realist to ever do it, bro. Real talk. Listen, and I, I still listen. And he, he, you know, obviously his life changed up. He's doing it, and is doing his thing right now. Oh, he's, doing I, he's doing his thing right now. But I'm a crazy story. We young. I knew you at this time, though, Gary. Mm-hmm. This is, I was working at Full Locker during this time. And um, I had li- nothing to do with this. My- <laughs> hey, you a wild boy, man. Yo, and so and I get a f- I'm I'm I get a random phone call one day, right? Random phone call, and it's my 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 homie Ant. He calls me up, and mind you, I, this is like very early on having a cell phone as a kid. I was probably like I had my first cell phone at 16 years old. This might have been like I was 17. I get a random phone call, so I would pick up numbers I didn't know because it didn't matter, right? This is yeah. back in hello. It's my man Ant. I hear mad noise in the background. He's like, yo, 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 that shit crazy. Yo, nigga, <laughs> nigga, yo, yo, wait till I get to the crib. Yo, I gotta tell you about something. Click, hangs up. I was like, yo, what the fuck this nigga talking about? I knew he was, he was used to be wilding, but it is what it is. Left it alone. And um, a couple days, maybe like two days later, uh, I, I'm on my way to work, to Foot Locker. I'm on the J train, going to work. This one on 34th? Yeah, on 34th Falaga, Street, Herald Square, you know, uh, Kids Foot Locker and um, back, the back of the Foot Locker side. I get a ran- another random number calling my phone. Now I pick up the phone and it's somebody saying, hey, what's going on? This is Detective so-and-so. You know, uh, we're over here. We want to, we're investigating the situation. Now, mind you, during this time, uh, it wasn't that many of us that had cell phones. I was like one of the few that had cell phones. So my friends used to prank me a lot. And we used to use my cell phone to prank people a lot all, all the time too. I actually thought it was somebody pranking my phone, one of my homies. So I heard the phone. I was like, man, get the fuck out of here, nigga. He hung up the phone. <laughs> I hung up the phone. <laughs> Straight up. I've been there. They called back again. And I'm like, let me see who this bitch ass nigga is. Let me see who it is. So I pick up the phone and like, yes, uh, we're sorry. I think the phone call got cut off. This is Detective so-and-so. You know, we were investigating the situation. And I was like, yo, suck my dick, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Hang up. I hang up. And I'm thinking it's funny now, right? Yo, my mom calls me. Check this out now. Now we're, I'm I had I'm on a J train. I just passed like Myrtle on a J train. I'm going to the city. I'm going to work. Yeah. My mom calls me. She's like, Mike, um, I, there's detectives here at the house in the living room, and they're asking me questions about something. And I'm like, what, ma? Like, I'm nervous now because I'm like, why would detectives be at your house? Because I ain't doing shit. Like, I'm right. not out there doing that. Like, I know that for a fact. Right. I'm not doing anything. So, I'm like, Ma, just, mind you, this is how crazy it growing up. I'm a kid, and I'm telling my mom, 17, telling my mom, Ma, it's, it's all right. It's going to be all right. Like, just chill. Don't worry about it. 
hang up the phone. The number calls back again. Maybe like 10 minutes after that. I'm still on the train. Like this is before the train goes underground. So I'm still be able, able to get the, because the train was elevated. If y'all know the J train line, yeah. they called back. They were like, again, this is detective so-and-so from the such and such precinct investigating a robbery. And I'm going to tell you something right now. If you hang up this phone, we're going to drag your little stupid ass out of Foot Locker today when you get out of work, before you get out of work. My heart dropped now. Because I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, they the like, what the fuck? No, no, yeah, no, no more, no more, no more that. No, I'm like, OMG, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm I'm on, I'm on nervous now. nervous like, now, mm. like dead nervous because I don't know what's going on. And they're like, yeah, so we're investigating this robbery. Um, we have some questions that we got to ask you because we believe that you are a part of this robbery. I know I'm not a part of no robbery. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting, I'm like, oh, all of a sudden, I'm, 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 I, and I apologize. I said, I, I thought somebody's prank calling me. Um, I don't know what's going on. So please, like, tell me what's going on. They're like, yeah, so we're investigating a case because a woman was robbed for her purse and her cell phone. And this woman happened to be a district attorney's wife. So you picked the wrong person to rob, you fucking asshole. They were talking, they were telling me, they, they think I, they thought I did it. Now I'm still at this point, Oh, clueless. No, I have no idea what's going no. on, and I'm like, uh, I, I said, officer, 100. You have the wrong person. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Where were you at, so and so? They telling me the day of when it happened. I'm like, I think I was home. Like, I was, I, which I was. I was like, so I think I was home. He was like, all right. So let me ask you this question. This person who robbed the district attorney's wife, the first number that they call after they steal her purse and her cell phone was you. This number that I'm calling right now. And the moment he fucking said that shit, everything clicked. And there was this fucking asshole, hey, and he calls my phone. He robs this lady, and he's so hyped to have a cell phone, he calls me with gibberish too. Yo, yo, it's crazy, yo. I don't even know what's going on. And I'm like, oh. So now I'm, because it clicked. The moment he said it clicked, I'm like, well, uh, uh, all of a sudden, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. Like, you know, they were like, yeah, the, the call was for about two minutes. So you guys spoke about something. Did you arrange this? Did you? I'm like, no, like, nah, I didn't arrange this. And he's he's going in and he's like, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. We'll see you at your job later. And I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm going to get fired. Mm-hmm. 100% I'm getting fired. So thank God they didn't come to the job. They didn't come to Falaka. And afterward, well, before I even get to that, they're, they're telling me, right? Who's this number? Such and such and such. Now, mind you, back in that day when we was younger, we, we memorized phone numbers at that time. We knew people's cell phone numbers. Yo, and they're listing numbers. All people that I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was all people. The whole, that, the, the, whole, the whole block. Oh, the whole block. No. This asshole ain't calls. He's so hyped to have a cell phone. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know these numbers. I, I, I don't know. Um, you might, you're fucking lying. Honestly, officer, I don't know. Like, it might have been the wrong number. I'm, I'm going down. Like, literally, I'm telling them I don't know. Because I knew in the back of my mind, I didn't do it. So Man. there was no way they was going to pin me for it. Because I know I just didn't do it. I had yeah, nothing to absolutely. do with it. Go to work. Come back home. And I called my man, Ant. And I'm telling Ant. And I'm like, oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I, I actually went to his house. I was afraid. This is, at 17, we're afraid of phone tapping. I go to his crib on Elton. And I'm like, yo, Ant. This is what's going down. They think I did it because you fucking called me. Mm. He's <laughs> it's like, yo, so you folded on me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, Ed, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. <laughs> I said, I don't know about this folding shit you talk about, but I said, you know, and I know I had nothing to do with that. I said, I don't want these cops bothering my mother no more. I don't want them bothering me no more. Nigga, you gotta figure this out. Fix Straight it. up. I right. said, you gotta fix this. Yo, to make to make a very long story show, yo, my man did time. Like he went to Rikers and all that for that. You know what I'm saying? But he's a real one. And is a real he knew he wasn't gonna let nobody else go down for that. You That's know what, what I'm saying? saying though, you 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 grew up in a in a, in a, we all grew up in the same neighborhood. Yeah. So we all knew that Mike wasn't no slouch, but Mike wasn't doing the stupid shit. So we could never hold Mike to that kind of standard. Mm-hmm. And then again, we would never come to Mike and be and and be and expect it, him, expect yeah. him to do the stupid shit we doing at the end of the day. And then all, the third thing is, if you a real if you a real street person, a street real street nigga, you know who's if you if you know a person who they are, and you bring them inside of that situation. You're doing yourself a disservice. Mm-hmm. You really don't care about that person. See, because if me and you grew up and we we ain't shit, and but we ain't shit together, because we 
that's different. Right. But when you have a friend that you care about, that you know is not capable of doing some of the things you're not even capable. That's 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 not that's not that doesn't that's doesn't want nothing to do with that. You even ask him, it's just, a, it's disrespectful. It right. shows that you don't care about that person. Right. So that's why, like, people would never do shit like that mm -hmm. with, with, with people that you know that you care about. Because you know, at the end of the day, I know somebody just told me a story recently, a couple of days ago. We were just talking about it. And he was like, same, almost very similar situation. He did some dumb shit, uh, took a cell phone, and ended up giving it to his cousin. Cops came, locked his cousin up. His cousin didn't fold on him nothing. This kid found out his cousin got locked up. He went to the precinct and, and told him that he did it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, as a, if you're a real person, you live by certain codes, codes and laws, yeah. not right. just snitching. Right. And part of that code is, I'm not going to let this man that got nothing to do with this with this life go down to the that I did. Right. Because that's just not how it's going to go down. Right. You understand? Take, you take what frozen comments. You know, like with me, I could have completely went and snitched against this dude because I had nothing to do with this dude. Mm -hmm. We just happen to be doing the same kind of bullshit in the same place, so they automatically tie me up with this indictment. Right. That's so crazy. You understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if I was some sucker, I could have easily said whatever they wanted me to say. I'll never forget the day my lawyer came to see me and goes, yo, this is what I got for you. You can rat like a rat, or you can take these 24 months. If I'm you, I'll take these 24 months because they're going to change the law, blah, blah, blah. Fuck it, give me the 24 months. And I remember being house, supposed to come home December 2012. And I'm like, what the f And I'm like, what am I doing right now? But you know, if I if that never happened to me, my life would never be where it's at today. And then, you know, things ain't perfect, but that situation changed my whole perspective on street life, period. It's like now, it's not worth it. I want to touch on that now because when it, when you and I met for the first time, <laughs> it was well, house arrest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a house arrest, right? I remember Mike came all, he rented a car all the way from New York so he came to see me at my first job. I'm on house arrest. And he, you had a towel, ankle, bro. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 It was you, the whole fam. I met and you Mike with the brace on the left ankle. So. And he's like, what you doing? I said, I'm, you know, I'm here doing what I do. <laughs> you know? He said, let me see the brace. I ain't gonna take this shit out. You know? It's like, you know, but that, that's what I'm saying. You know? on your ankles, but he's man. always been a lowly friend to me, so you got to do the same thing in return. Right. You so know? let me ask you a question. So now, as we talk about Christmas, we talk about this, there's a lot of things that once a topic comes up can bring up some past, some past things and make it uneasy. But you also felt the side of relief in terms of, you know, we've been able to have some great success together, together in business. Some amazing Christmas. So what are some of those highlights? Like, what were some of those best moments for you now achieving and having that Success, making money every month that people can't even make a year. I mean, being, I mean, me, me, was my it, thing was, was take take yourself back. Sorry to cut you. Right. I want I want you to emotionally take yourself back to that time and say like, yo, because so when I, I achieved this lifestyle, when I when I was at the, the when I was at the lifestyle that I was you know fortunate enough to have at the time and 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 you know that I that I was so appreciative. My biggest thing was I like to give, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like giving for me. It, it 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 does something to me that 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 nothing else really does. Fulfills you, know? you. Fulfills me in a way that nothing does. Like mm -hmm. you know, I don't care if I if you know about if I could buy something nice for myself, but giving somebody in need of something mm -hmm. is something that's fulfilling for me because I've been on the flip side of that where I've been needing mm -hmm. on my hands and knees praying for something and not knowing how the fuck I'm gonna get out of the situation. And sometimes some things like this came through for me. So being able to give that back has always been my number one priority. Mm -hmm. And that's my that's the thing that stays in the top of my in the front of my mind for me chasing my goals, you know, at this time. You know, when we see when when you hear Holton talk about the things he does at restaurants, the thing, like that's something right. that's a different type of happiness and fulfillment. He was on the other side of that. Because tip. I was on the other side. <laughs> right. So for me it's like I could do that without having to tell the person who I am. Right. Without having to post it on social media. You understand what I'm right. saying? You know how many people's rents I help pay, you know how many car payments I help, you know how many mothers that I've helped out with money. How many mm. you know I never bragged about it so anybody and these are some of the same people that shitted on me when shit got rough but right. it, didn't, it but don't you did matter it for you, right. that, you the also... fact that I was able to do it mm -hmm. is what it was like <clears throat> fulfilling you know what I'm right. saying and Christmas for me and the holidays for me has always been like I said it's been up and down kind of rocky you know because the, I grew up a little bit rough you know I'll tell you a story a crazy story about Christmas when I was younger my mother rest in peace you know, I didn't, I wasn't growing my mom. My mom was, you know, a drug addict, you know, whatever. You know, I'm proud of my mother. If anybody got something to say, they got to deal with me. <laughs> you know, right. with my mom's my mom. I love right. you, mom. You know, and um, one Christmas, I'm living with my pops. The first time I lived with my dad for one year. I think I'll tell you the story before, Mike. My grandmother was with my brother. 
living my brother still lived in New York. I was living in Boston. And I remember my dad was mad cheap, dog. When I talk about cheap, then yeah, man, it came out close. At least we was broke in New York, but we had, the, you know, $50 uptown. You could rock the black joints, you know, take them last your whole year. Mm-hmm. Now my pops used some boo-boo, so I begged my grandmother for a pair of lug boots. Remember when lug boots was rocking? Mm-hmm. And I begged her, and then boom, we came home, and I was, you know, it was about to be Christmas break, and I'm on the phone with my mother and my from my dad's face, and my, you know, my mom's like, yo, come spend the Christmas holidays with me when you come up, blah, blah. My dad's like, you know, she's if you ain't doing drugs, nah. my mom's like, nah, I haven't done drugs in forever, I'm clean. Blah. So if we, she got everybody gassed up, me and my pops, my stepmother, my, my little brother and sister, we roll up there to New York on Bedford and Myrtle, where my stepmother's family lived at, and I'm waiting for my mother to come. And bro, you hear this fucking, remember the, the when with the old cars, you turn, the fucking, the, whatever the timing belt was off, fuck, you hear this shit turn the corner, dog. And I look <laughs> under there, and it's a, a Ghostbusters station wagon, 1980. <laughs> and it's, and I look, and it's my mom and my step pops, Ralphie, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> my step pops jumps out the car. You know when you go buy a shirt at like at Woolworth or but you had a guy with my nice butt that Woolworth, one. right? <laughs> and, Bro. Know, and the plastic and come when you pull it out, still got the squares on it. You got the eye in that thing. That thing, he, it looked like he bought it, put it on, and took it in his pants, sir. You can play checkers on his shirt, though. That's, that's what all the people who buy, buy their shirt at Express. Everybody crazy. Who, wait, everybody who buy their shirts at Express, at Express still, yeah. they, they got that, that same vibe. That meat crease. You know what I'm saying? You got the plastic in the front, you can't even take it out yet. Yeah, you ain't take the shit out of the car. So, like, my mom come out, and they go, I'm like, yo, my heart trying like, oh no, my pops not gonna let me go. So right. My pops looks at me and goes, You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now, mind you, I, I respect my pops for because my pops, you know, when my mother was fucked up and she left my dad, my dad tried to fight for custody. Mm-hmm. But since he wasn't, he was he came from Puerto Rico, he didn't have family, he lost the battle. So we got we ended up getting to you know adopted, thrown in the force gate, getting adopted, right? My sister got taken to Puerto Rico, me and my brother got taken by my you know, by my grandmother, whatever. So my stepmother jumps in. That's why I love her to this day. I call her mom. She's like, he's going to go with her. That's his mother. He deserves to go with her. She stood up to my dad and she took to the side. She goes, yo, please, if anything happens, call me. Mm-hmm. Don't make me regret this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I got you. Then I'm hype. I go over there. Christmas boom. I, Christmas come. I go pick up my gift from my grandmother. So the brand new brown lug leather boots. You know, you can scratch with your finger and leave the line. You know what I'm talking about, G? With the black rubber saw. I was, all I can think about is when I get back to Boston, I'm going to kill them out there. Like, Boom, Christmas comes, boom. The next morning, I get up. You know, hype. You still Christmas. I, 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 feel a, I feel a robbery story I, coming bro, on. The I go to my box of lugs. My mother and my stepfather stole my boots. Oh, I knew it. Why did I All my it? kids, they stole my boots, went on a mission, left me in the crib for two days, son. Oh. If I would have called my pops, I know he would have came and killed my mother and my stepfather, and I didn't want to make my stepmother look crazy. Right. So imagine being a kid on Christmas, get your boots stolen oh, from your, your mother, right. right? and you just there, and you still love her enough to not call your pops because you know he's going to wild on her. So Yo. it's like, that's that's the that's type of feelings that come in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when I got older, being able to put the smiles on my kids' face that I didn't have, was, was well, was, I remember was, when we, was, I came right. up here, we was playing friggin' uh, nerf fights, nerf fights nerf in your battles. crib on Christmas uh, My battles. kids had the best, you know what I'm saying? They, to this day, they, look, my Gar- son, Gar- my son just got a new car yesterday. One of, them, one of them nerf fights, bro. Yeah, I don't, I, he <laughs> caught, caught me one time, he's in the corner, he's like, yo, Mike dead. Yeah, but being, <laughs> you know, but being able to give yeah, your, friends, your friends' kids gifts and stuff like that, right, you know, that's, right. that's, you know, Christmas is about you know, give it and, and have it and, you know, share it. But, that, you know, like what we're talking about, there's a lot of people right now with all this shit We work so hard to to get to that point, though, man, because at some point, some, some point, we was all kind of <clears> fucked <throat> up. We was all, all had us, those, those similar Everybody stories. Was. So now to have the, the to, to be able, like you said, to shift our world through opportunity, be rewarded from that. And I'm telling y'all, it was rough out there in the streets. It's rough doing your own business as well. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But look at the result. But at least in business, you look don't at have the outcome. Dead jail. That too, that, that's a big <laughs> right. part of you it. Feel what I'm saying? Right. But also now, when the rough is, becomes worth it, when the hard work becomes worth it, where you're able to now have those moments with your kids. I've had those moments with you and your kids. Yeah. Um, shit, we're probably gonna celebrate tomorrow and the mm-hmm. 25th um, together. So um, when it comes to opportunity, I'll tell y'all this together. When it comes to opportunity, and is it worth it coming from where we come from, man? It is completely every second of fulfillment you get, whether you're doing something with your money or finally doing something with your life that you feel like, you know, you have that purpose, you'll do it over and over and over again, no matter how hard it is. A million times, man. Because it brought a lot of happiness. And it's not to say just sitting there counting money. 
Right. It's the things we were able to do with it and things we continue to and, do with it. And the happiness surpasses Christmas and New Year. It surpasses everything. That The happiness, like <laughs> the way our children are raised at the moment. Like they, mm-hmm. they, I use my oldest son as an example, Isaiah. You know, that young man, you get to implement all of this stuff that we didn't know into these children now. Mm-hmm. And that's the that's the difference right there, man. Right. Like to see, that's the difference. That's all it is to see it. Like to see these kids now. It's the difference. My son is a young, good looking kid. He's into the hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. But my son's about business. My right. son learning how to he, trade. He, he my caught, son, he caught my a son, little bit of you. My son that. just got a twenty twenty Honda Civic. He's mm-hmm. eighteen years old, son. My son. You know, it doesn't mean that he's a sucker. He's a, no, but he. But the fact that he don't ever have to even fathom doing anything that we had to do as as kids growing up. That's the difference, man. Amen. Right. And that's what, that's what that's people need to learn. That's why I always say when people, it's a lack of knowledge, a lack of education. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. Right. It's just a lack of knowledge. We don't know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. So here's what I tell us. We all have a responsibility, man, to go out there and at least, at least show our kids the 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 grinder in us, the, the serious side. Because I feel like that's a reflection of him seeing what she was doing at those times. Yeah, absolutely. And he said, you know what? I see my pops up. Do this, do that, but do the business. That's something I'm gonna adapt. That's and, something and I'm gonna use and educate myself. I, watch yeah, I see pops. Isaiah, man. Yeah, I seen him doing. He's hosting Bob out. Proctor and yeah, all he that. Reads, I see he him. Reads every, he, reads, he reads one book a week. You know what I'm saying? My son is big into reading. That's, That's because he's seen he's seen us. He's seen Mike. He knows Gary. He met Johnny Wimbry. My son, my son had to do a school project one time, and he and and you know about. Um, entrepreneurship and he's quoting us he mm-hmm. you know he's going on YouTube and he's he's, he's showing me a, a Johnny Wimbry quote of you know Michael Jackson well he's talking about gay talking about all of us right. and he's asked questions he's he's intrigued mm-hmm. because again what demographic of, of kids of young adults like us that look like them that we, we that's what, imagine if we had us when we was that age Shit. how different our life would be I ain't no personal it's our job and our duty 28. but that's what I'm saying it's our <laughs> job and duty to be that for these people now no it is yeah and that's because why we, we don't do, do that this. we're gonna do it for them because hip hop culture is not again it's not knocking hip hop culture no but they not it's, that's a different grind that's it's, a, that it's, that's it's, an equal it's, success it's opening up the, the, the lifestyle for us to see is possible and it's, it's showing us the better things that we should get out of life. It's showing us, it's giving us that vision that we go out there and say, man, I, I want to live like that because sometimes when you live in a yellow box and you're not exposed to lifestyle, you don't even know you can get that. You don't have to shoot for it. So I commend us, our culture on that where we go out there and show people what's possible for our, for our, for our people. But now there's multiple ways to go out there. There's alternatives to go out there right. and get it. right. And if you want that lifestyle, learn the alternatives so you can go out there and get it. Mm-hmm. That's all. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, uh, our kids now see us in that best grinding stages of our life. They learn from it and, and so forth. So, and I and I think that you know for the upcoming year. So we had the, pretty much the end of the year, twenty twenty. I also think that twenty twenty one should be a a year for people to um, go and apply a lot of the adversity lessons that they were taught in 2020. So this is what I'm actually doing for me. So, I, you know, I give, I give people, obviously give, I want to give you all some game. I'm looking forward to 2022. And here's the reason why I'm looking forward to 2022. I'm looking forward to 2022 because uh, 2020 was, was de- it was, it was such a, a, a curveball that it became a very big l- learning experience for, for many people, for all of us, including myself. 2021 is the year that we now go apply what we learned. 2021 is, you know, if people were broken down, you know, because of hardships and things of that nature because of 2020, you go rebuild that in 2021. Yeah, we'll cry about 2020 next year. Right. <laughs> right. Over. You know what I'm saying? 2020 is over. You go and re- right. you do what you've got to do, right, to go ahead and put the building blocks back in your life in 2021. You know what I'm saying? I will look at the next upcoming year as, all right, Time to get back and get my shit together. You know what I'm saying? Rebuilding, yeah. And look look forward to, I would say, 2022 as a year that you can begin to now reap some of the benefits of the work that you're putting in from the learning lessons you learned in 2020. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that 100%. I think that's... Like, you know what's funny? I was <laughs> like, my, uh, Jace, Jace was, you know, kids now, they, they, they talk about... Yeah, when I said Jace, Jace was like, yo, he want a Lambo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so <laughs> he son want a Lambo. Want a Lambo. Hey, right. be careful what you leverage with your, with your kids. My Bro, wife is a you. teacher. She has her master's. 
She has m- made sure that in this pandemic, my son is not just on his school shit, but advanced. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like he's reading two grades above his regular level. So now he's like, you know, ma, you know, dad, you know, I, I want a Lamborghini. And I f- it comes from the video games. They play these games and stuff like that. And what they see is well, what they're exposed to. So she's leveraging because she wants him to keep reading. Because she likes, yo, sometimes, like if my wife was my mom, I would hate her. Like <laughs> when people who are on break, he's still reading. Summertime, he's he's in second grade. So I would hate that if that was my mom. But um, I commend her for it because look where it got him today. So for her, her leverage is, well, this is why they tell you to read. So you got to learn how to read because when you read and you do things and you do good in school, then you were able to get those things that you want, like a Lamborghini. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me just be clear. <laughs> so stop telling him this shit. And you got to be clear because I heard that shit too. <laughs> and he says, "I right, damn, I got to read. So I got to, I got to learn. You got to read so you get a good job. He's like, yeah, I got to get a job, man. I got, I'm going to have to like work in like Publix. <laughs> <laughs> so, I looked over and I was like, you better fucking own a Publix if you want a Lamborghini. You, you, to, you, work you, need, like, to, yeah. you need to own about 16 of them. Yeah, to I'm go like, one work in a Publix. Now you got to own a few. How do I earn that? How do I own one of those? Like, where I get the. So, my son is at that age when he's asking these questions now, and I'm going to find my way to teach him how to do it and teach him some skills. But I'm hearing her say that because I know she's just trying to leverage it to get him to do his schoolwork and do that. But be careful because that's exactly what we heard. If you go there, you you do these certain things, you're going to get that stuff. So now I got to kind of course correct him a little bit to say, yeah, you learn how to read so that you can be educated and learn things and continuously learn how to own. Not just saying, oh, I want to I need to read, mm-hmm. fit into mm-hmm. society. And then I'm working public and have a Lamborghini yeah, and nobody, nothing wrong with people that work in public. My son fast. obviously wants a Lambo. And that's not the same direction right. that he needs to go in to get that. If he said he just wanted this, cool, then you could work there. You could do what you got. And, and obviously, my son has to learn how to earn money and he has to take his steps. But if he has those right. dreams and goals, I'm not going to take them away to fit society's <laughs> dreams and goals for him. I'm going to say, All right, if this is what you want, you're going to have to redirect it and go in this direction. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. if you live outside of uh, Florida, Publix is a supermarket. Yes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Because like, It's Publix it's like, like a high, a high it's end. It's like a shop right. Is it? I'm about yeah, to say, New what, what, what's you a compare Publix? What's a Publix? I don't even know. What's I don't a, know, bro. Kroger? When I was growing up, nah, Kroger's like Texas. You bugging me. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Kroger, I, I, I Kroger, went to Seatown, bro. What listen, I'm going to be great. Yo, growing up, the Poppin' Supermarket, Shop bro, right? now nah, was Pathmark. Nah, Pathmark, Pathmark was like yeah. the poppers Only because Pathmark was Pathmark. the Queens. Yeah, on, on Atlantic Ave. It was on Liberty and, and Crescent by my sea town. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, that's what I'm saying. When I when I actually went and got a car, get, that's what yeah. you said. When I got a car, we went, we went to go to Pathmark. 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 Outside legs. of that, yo. Yeah, frozen crab car, so you got Pathmark. <laughs> I used to walk to Atlanta. I used to walk to City Line. You had shop right. So 555 Atlantic. That's how we got our that's how we got our food. Yeah, Sea Town, yeah, Kifu. 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 What what do you compare Publix to back in the year? Nothing. Listen, no, no. Publix, Publix a, a is Pathmark. fairly clean. Pathmark. 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 No, no, no. I think no. Publix is the best one. No, no, no. Honestly, no. Uh, 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 there's nothing to compare. Publix was like, Publix was like, what, 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 what do you call it up in New York? Somebody said it already. ShopRite? ShopRite. It was so like a shop. Like, if a supermarket well, well, stop and shop. Remember, stop, stop and shop. shop. Yes, yes. If a supermarket does not have boards and meat, it's trash. <laughs> it's bottom of the barrel. When did you get it out of here? And <laughs> All of it gone. If they don't have, when you go get coke because they don't got boards head, get out get of there now. Now. <laughs> when when Dixie so was like a shop like right, a, I guess. A, a, or yeah, when like Dixie's, it's great. Like a right, stop and not, shop. I'm not here, no, when, no making being. Yeah, if, if you, if, because if you're in Florida, that's normal. There's only two supermarkets, Publix and, and, and Win Dixie. You live in New York, there's Sea Town, food, uh, 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 the, the one I was, Yo, food, in Orlando, Orlando, food Bazaar. Mike, you know what I'm saying? In Orlando, they got Publix, Sabor. <laughs> Spanish public stuff. Sabor. Bravo. You got the Bravo. Nah, Bravo. I hear it's fire it's too. Fire. If you want to get a nice plate of rice and beans, but bro, let me tell you something. Six dollars. You can eat that for breakfast, yeah, lunch, so and dinner. My son wants to, if you equivalent that for my New Yorkers watching, so he going to work at a stop and shop or a shop right to go get a Lambo. So if you understand my story now, where I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right, right. That just doesn't align. It's not about him working. It's just about that shit is far fetched. Yeah, but at least your son has the mindset to know that it's gonna take work to get the last. Yeah, because he's thinking up, like, what can we well, hustle? What can we scare? He's like, damn, how, well, how do I do that? Not how sure can we take to get to this part? Now, nah, can know? I? Can like, I? He's my... seen the grind. He's seen us do presentation. Yeah, yeah, he's, right. seen, he's seen us work. So he's like, how can right. I earn? Because I want a Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget the first time Elias was in Mike's Lamborghini. No, the Ferrari. Mm-hmm. 
I'll never forget that time he, when you remember we came to the crib and you, had a lot of, you took a last round on, on, on the Pines thing, on, on Pines and Palm, Palm. Mm-hmm. and um, his mother came to me one day she goes I want to say thank you I'm like for what she goes you know for, for being so good with Elias like you know for teaching him I'm like what do you mean she goes you know I overheard a conversation between Elias and his older cousin Chris so Elias is nine and Chris probably like 13 now so imagine you know Elias probably like six years old you know Chris probably like nine, ten, whatever and they're talking about cars and uh, she hears Elias say, um, I'm going to have a Lamborghini when I grow up. I'm going to have a Ferrari, you know, blah, blah. Dr. Theo Mike has a Ferrari. I'm going to have a Ferrari and Lamborghini. And, she, hear, and he, she hears his older cousin say, oh, my dad said that we can't afford that one, a, a, you know, an older car, like a, some type of Chevy truck or something like that. His dad's in the older cars. But it goes show you, his dad's not doing him a disservice. His dad doesn't want him to vision. He just doesn't know. It's not around. It's not in his, in his children. Exactly. Right. When, you don't, when you don't tell your kids... You can have whatever you put your mind to, whatever your heart desires, you do it the right way, honest way. It's possible. That's all that you need to, that's all they need. Mm-hmm. You understand? Eventually they'll figure it out. All right, Publix is not going to give you the Lambo, but this, you know, the mindset is, mindset you understand? Right, right. All right, I work at Publix for two years and, you know, learn this and learn that and then go ahead, whatever, whatever, but it's the mindset mm-hmm. that you put in them. At mm-hmm. least they have the mindset to understand that they want those things. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't, about Lamborghini, I didn't even know what a Lamborghini for it was until the, we knew what was up the highest, the fi- most fired car was what back then a Lexus. All the drug dealers had right. a Lexus. The, 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 the Lexus a GS back in the day. Legend. Uh, 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 Lexus, well, well, nah, the Lexus GS. Yes. Remember the Range Rover was the criminal. You had a Range in the hood. You was rocking. You was yeah. big time. <laughs> yeah, you that's know, like a fact. Your life was a music video. Yeah, and that's that's why that's why I'm gonna go ahead and give give my give props to uh, you know I give give props to it where it's due because. For somebody like me, I was de- definitely driven and inspired by the hip hop industry. Absolutely, Yo, specifically Puff. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, man. So we all I, are. I, I, yeah, I, a lot of my driving factors, bro, directly, you know, to be able to, you know, you know, thank God, man, on a Ferrari well, and all that stuff. Is yet, was Puff? Do you think influenced you the most growing up? <clears throat> Whether it, was, whether it was positive or negative, they all influenced us in some way. I was more of, of the, the athletes. Okay. Because my mom listened to a lot of, uh, I'm West Indian, so I'm listening to a lot of That's reggae. All. I ain't going to lie, I used to see them Jaheim music. I'm an R&B thug, so I used to see Jaheim with the Range Rover. I like, got to get me a Range Rover, boy. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, I had to get, yo, Jaheim pull up with, with a Range Rover, a Tahoe. His face looked like a Range the Rover, son, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he like not, not he like, like us, the, the rusty uh, Yo, Ghostbuster truck your mom's pulled up in, but... DMX for me, growing up... That, that was him for you? He's really want to do... Like, I felt like, again, it's, it's crazy, but just the way he used to... His music was, and how transparent he was. You, y'all remember that song, Slipping? Mm-hmm. Come on, son. That's like, that's up there. That's up there with that's up there with Dear Mama Tupac. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Come on, but, son, that shit hit him. Nah, but son, you laugh it though. But that, I, I used to hear that shit be like, Sam, that shit resonated Fall. with me. Right. And up. then the way he, you know, to see that, that he went through that and was able to get successful, it was like, damn, you could come from that shit and be right, able to, right. you know what I mean? Right. Just to be, because you know, all, everybody that's doing crazy shit in the hood, they don't want to admit it, but them niggas is hurting. Right. You know what I'm saying? We all hurting. Right. Somewhere emotionally we're hurting. Yeah, so yeah, no, true. When you hear the DMX prayers in the beginning of the album, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, that shit go you on. You go crash somebody's head over and come over and pray like that. Like, oh, I'm sorry, but I needed nah, to my do shit, it. My shit was the athletes. Al- 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 I used to see like braids. Remember, you used to get the braids. Corn I had the braids. Right there, I got this right here. Tied it up. Hold my own. Alan Iverson. Alan yeah. Iverson. Um, the dub series. Remember, they used to have the video games. You get the little... Escalate with the rims and the spree well. So yeah. my shit. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you, boys. Remember, right. remember the magazines, the Don Diva magazine. Don Divas, yeah. That, what was, that was the DJ that, one that they had, Mike? Shit. It was a. Uh... My shit was like DJ that. DJ Magazine? Yeah, like Scratch or something no, like that? Oh, uh, you talking about all of them in the train. Source? I mean, Source Magazine? Source. Uh, Scratch uh, Magazine, I think, was a magazine, though. Was that was a producer, producer magazine. That was a producer yeah. magazine, That's yeah. the first time I've ever magazine. seen, uh, I ever read an article, I remember, of, of Cool and Dre. Mm-hmm. The first time Cool and Dre was big. I forgot what record it was that they made that was so fire. Because I used to, we used to always talk about the music industry. Because, again, you, fan, you, you idolize and you fantasize mm-hmm. about the, the, you know, the... The, I always playing, boy, I was going to get out the hood. What? And I remember reading, right. like, damn, this dude's went to school? Mm-hmm. Like this, you know what I mean? Like, you don't learn that. You think that you can just be a thug and go rap and go make some music. It don't right. work that way. Right. But, yo, um, forever, man. this was good. This this was good. Episode seven was dope. Um, parting words is, yo, uh, happy new year uh, going into the new year to everybody. Take 2020 as a learning lesson, of course. Uh, use 2021, man, as... as uh, 
uh, a platform for you to now build upon, you know, your future from everything that you've learned in 2020, uh, use it as a stepping stone, you use it as a, as a time to go ahead and build upon, uh, your future. You know, I would definitely say use this as to look forward to like reaping some benefits in 2022. Absolutely. So yeah, without, without, without that, cause a lot of people don't talk about that. I think, you know, 2021, you know, new year, new me, it's always that let's look at it from a little bit longevity standpoint. You know what I mean? Things are not going to turn around 100% by March or even June or July. No, things can happen. You can make some mm-hmm. progress, but let's make the year, this year, you know, a progress turning for the better. And, uh, you know, 2022 will probably be a good year, but not to say 2021 won't, but you get what I'm saying. So, uh, absolutely. On that note, much love. God bless. Rap episode seven. What's going on, guys? It's Michael Jax here, and I just want to say thank you for tuning in to the Jax Podcast. And if you got any value from this, I would love for you to go ahead and leave a positive review on Apple Music, Spotify, or wherever else you were able to hear this. Or if you check us out on YouTube, definitely go ahead and leave a quote, comment, anything that you like, if you got some value from this. Much love, take care, and I'll see you next week, Thursday, on the Jax Podcast.